I'm Nancy Zeman and welcome to Sewing with Nancy. During this program I'm going to tune into collars, sharing with you tips and techniques to create four different collars. Collars are often focal points of garments, framing your face or setting the mood for your attire. Here's how to make that frame picture perfect. Let's start with the simplest collar technique called a wrapped collar. This casual jacket features a traditional collar sewn in a non-traditional way. Discover the joy of sewing collars next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's how-to sewing program with Nancy Zeman is being brought to you by Pfaff, the largest European producer of sewing machines. Pfaff's creative line of sewing machines and hobby lock sergers are simply the best. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears for home, classroom, and industry. Ginger scissors and shears are the choice of professionals. Oxmoor House, the publisher of innovative sewing, quilting, and craft books, including books by Nancy Zeman. Madeira Thread from Germany, with superior quality and smart packaging to make it a sensational value, preferred by home and professional embroiderers everywhere. And Nancy's Notions Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and unique, hard-to-find sewing notions and supplies. The wrap collar technique that I'm going to show you can be done on practically any collar, any pattern collar. This is a very traditional type of pattern. You cut two collars, one for the upper collar, one for the under collar. On some patterns, you will have separate pattern pieces for the upper collar and under collar. Either style will work. Cut out your fabric from your pattern as well as the interfacing, the same size of the pattern. Now for some of you who have watched Sewing with Nancy over the years, you probably have noticed that when working with interfacings, the lightweight fabric that is fused to the wrong side of pattern pieces so that to give it weight and support, I've done some trimming so that I would eliminate bulk from the seam allowances. But I've changed my mind and changed ways of doing things following ready to wear. They use the same interfacing we use and they do what's called a full fuse, fusing the entire size of the under collar and upper collar, both layers. Now when you're fusing both layers, you have to make certain that you're using the correct weight of interfacing, lightweight, nothing too heavy. And I always do a little test fuse, testing the correct interfacing on the fabric. On this particular sample, I have a very sheer interfacing, sheer fabric. I fuse part of it. It has a much heavier hand once it's fused, so make sure that you go very lightweight. On this linen-like fabric, again, I've gone slightly heavier. Here it's very crisp, and when I put the two together, it doesn't seem as noticeable. So when in doubt, use a lighter weight. Less is best for this interfacing. I have both collars, the upper and under collars, pinned together. And I'm going to do the sewing, but not following the traditional way. A pattern instruction many times will tell you to sew the center edge, pivot at the corner, and then sew the lower edge, and then pivot at the other corner. We're not going to do any pivoting at all. I'm going to start sewing from the very cut edge, sewing the long lower edge of the two collars together, both upper collar and under collar. This is just a straight stitch. Simple, simple sewing, but again, it, I'm demonstrating this just because it's so different than what many of us have learned in the past. If you've never sewn a collar before, this is a very simple way of going about it. Just meeting those right sides together. The cut edges are sewn. I'm using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Oh, one more time, there we go sewing from cut edge to cut edge. Now after sewing, we're going to press the seam. Pressing is as important as doing the correct sewing. Two steps. We always press flat the way it has been sewn and then press the seam open. On many fabrics, I just like to use a press cloth so I don't leave any imprints, but press that area flat. And you'd press the entire length of the seam and I'll just press part of it for you, but then the second step is to press it open. And press it open over a shape, if you can, because that will prevent the seam allowances from leaving an imprint on the collar. Now after you press the entire seam, you can see how nice and flat that would get. We're going to do some trimming. Trimming the under collar, or one of the collar's seam allowance quite narrow, and the other one a little bit wider. No measuring here, just eyeballing, trimming some excess bulk out of the way. And then after doing the trimming, 
you can see that this folds very nicely right along that stitch line. We're going to increase that ability to keep the under collar under by doing now some under stitching. Stitching all the seam allowances toward this what's going to become the under collar. Traditionally, under stitching is a straight stitch. And I'm going to show you that on a collar sample that has been completely trimmed and pressed, but also to show you another alternative. Again, to do this under stitching, I'm sewing all the seam allowances to one of the collars. The stitching will not show, but if you would like, really like to have a very sharp edge, switch to a very wide zigzag, or what I'm showing right now is a multiple zigzag. And I like this. This gives more definition to that edge. You'd simply stitch from cut edge to cut edge. Now the beauty of this is, with traditional collars, you cannot sew into the corner, the understitching that is, because you have that corner closed. Here you can understitch either with a straight stitch or with this multi-zigzag stitch the entire length, giving a very crisp collar edge. Now as you can see, we have to sew the center front edge. And to do this, we'll simply meet right sides together. I have contrasting thread colors so you can see the stitching a little bit more easily. And then I'd start to sew from the fold to the cut edge of the neckline. And notice all the seam allowances are in place just the way they should be when the collar is turned to the right side. Put a couple pins in here. And then we're back to the straight stitch, starting to stitch, and then simply sew that 5 eighths of an inch seam. Do the same on both sides. Now for pressing, I'm simply going to do the same step by pressing it flat and then pressing it open. Now sometimes on small collars it's difficult to press it open. So you could press over an edge or I'm going to just simply finger press. Open that seam flat and then press it and you'll be amazed what just pressing with your fingers can do. After you have trimmed the seam allowances, and then done some grading, we can turn this right side out. Put the point of the turner in and invert it. And then bring the point out. Here's the collar. Perfectly shaped, stitched and graded by using this unique wrap corner technique. Oriental style blouses with mandarin collars add a touch of elegance to any wardrobe. The collar is a focal point and deserves special attention. I'd like to share with you the simple ways you can create this collar with ease. I'm wearing the same pattern that you just saw as a close-up. A very easy pattern to make, a simple collar to create, and I'd like to show you the inside details so you can see how it's finished. There's a facing that finishes the front half of it, and then the lower edge and the back collar is turned under for a very clean finish. So the key is to get these curves on both sides to match perfectly, and I'll show you how to do that. Obviously, you'll be cutting two collars or two stand-up collars, an inner and outer collar, and I have them again fused with interfacing, both of them, using a very lightweight shear interfacing, a full fuse. To get the collar curves to be exact, we're going to mark that right on the fabric, just on one of them. So after fusing the collar, then simply place some tracing paper on the interfacing side. I have it folded in half so that I can, when I fold this, the tracing paper will meet the interfacing, the wrong side of the collar, then place the collar on top. I don't do a lot of marking with a tracing wheel and tracing paper, but it certainly works out great for this technique. In the long areas, you really don't need specific markings, but when you get around this curved area, this is where you need the accurate guideline. If you'd like, you can certainly mark the lower edge as long as we're marking, and I'm just simply going to mark where the turned under section needs to take place in the back of the collar. Again, this is just marked on one of the collars. You're only sewing on one side. And when I flip this open, you'll be able to see that I have the markings transferred to both collars, and they're the identical markings. If you follow that road mark there, just like when you're driving, you certainly have equal collars. Meet right sides together and pin along the outer edges. Here you can see a close-up of stitching this curve. I'm using a very short stitch length, about a 1.5 millimeter or 18 to 20 stitches per inch to curve or sew around the curve. 
during the long stretches, you can lengthen the stitch if you'd like. You simply sew that outer edge using that same principle of the shorter stitch length in the curved area so that you can get an accurate curve and this collar has been completely stitched following my markings. As in the last collar technique, after stitching you press. On my padded surface I'm simply going to press the seams flat and then press them open. This pressing flat always works out so much, makes it easier I should say to press the seam open. So step one, press flat. Step two, press it open. Now you, you can imagine that it's easy to press open the flat areas of this collar. Again, I'm working over a curved surface. Just press that. But when I get to the curve of the collar, this doesn't work as well. There are a couple of ways that you could do this. I, I could just press this corner open, the very lower edge. And I'll move it up a little bit. But to get this round curve, there are several ways to accomplish that. You could press it over a light curve, corresponding curve, but not all of you may have a pressing tool like this. This works great, but if you do not have this, I have found that if I could press most of this curve on my flat surface, and especially the starting point, takes just a little time, then the other portion of the curve, finger press. Never underestimate the press that you have bright built in. Just press that open, especially on these soft fabrics. It's amazing how flat that will create that curve. Pressing that curve first is very, very important. And you can see how that just holds the shape just with pressure. Now even though I haven't done any trimming, notice that when I turn this right side out, it really has a smooth curve. To make this more bulk or less bulk, simply do trimming, making one seam allowance quite narrow and the other seam allowance a little bit wider. It's not necessary to do measuring, just simply again trim some of that excess fabric away. You would trim the entire collar, both the long edges and the curve. Understitching is a possibility by all means, but I have found if proper pressing is accomplished and trimming and grading, really it's not necessary to do the understitching because on a mandarin collar you may bo see both the inside and the outside of the collar. This last sample has been top pressed. After grading and trimming, I simply press from the top side using a press cloth. I can check to make sure that both of my collars are perfectly matched and then I'm ready to set it to the neckline. Tune in to the most unique collar technique I know. It's called an express collar. You'll learn how to eliminate the bulk from the center front seams and simplify the collar making process. Two simple seams are all you'll need to sew. Sewing has never been easier. You just saw a close-up of this blouse, the finished collar, but the unique part of the collar is hidden on the underside. As I mentioned, the collar seams, the center fronts, are folds. There isn't a seam here making this point very sharp. But the hidden seam and the beauty of this technique is found on the under collar. The seams from the center front have magically been switched to the center back. To do this change, you'll change your pattern piece. Now each collar will look a little bit different after you've changed it. I'll show you two collar techniques or two different collars so that you can see what I mean. But the steps are the same. On your pattern piece, before you actually cut out your fabric, you're going to switch it around. Separate the pattern right at the center back. Cut it apart at the center back. So it's in two pieces. But put it back together again. Instead of putting it back together at the center back, we're going to put those pieces together at the center front. Fold under the seam allowance of one of the collars. Fold it under the 5 8 and overlap it to the seam allowance of the opposite collar. Now if you feel uncomfortable about doing this, you could make a sample tissue paper if you'd like, but this will work very well. And I have these overlapped, either pin or tape into place. You will find that there will be a little extra seam allowance if there's a little extra triangle at the bottom. Simply clip that off. Those are just little extra seam allowances that you don't need. Now believe it or not, you're almost ready to cut out this collar and we've shaped it differently.
But before we do, we'll s switch down to my pattern pieces. We need to add a seam allowance to one end of the collar and a fold mark to the opposite end. And on this particular pattern, you'll see that I've written uh, place on fold at one end and added a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance on the other. So this is the pattern piece to cut out. Now this collar looks fairly straight. That's because the original collar did not have a very sharp point. Let me unpin my original pattern again to show you. But this collar did not have a very sharp angle. The collar I worked with earlier in today's program had a very much sharper degreed angle in this area. If you use this same technique on a pattern such as this, you'll get a different looking pattern using the same concept. But they'll both be correct. I overlapped on this tissue paper, I overlapped the stitching lines on top of each other, folded under 5 eighths one on top of the other, and because of that severe angle, notice the shape that I achieved. One end has the fold marking, and the other end has the seam allowance. Either way, it's going to work out fine. You can see quite a different looking pattern, even though we use the same technique. Now we'll go back to the first design. And I'll show you the pattern piece that has been cut out. I simply cut out from this particular pattern piece one collar. This is both upper and under collar. It's very long. And cut out the interfacing, the same size, cutting it the size of the pattern piece. And you would fuse this double interfacing, or this unfold this interfacing, and fuse it to the wrong side of the collar. Again, a full fuse of the interfacing. Now to do the sewing two seams, two quick seams to stitch. Just the way that pattern looked, we're going to now sew that center back seam. The seam has been stitched and pressed open. You press it flat, then press it open, and place the seam at the center back. I have that center back marked. The second seam is to stitch the lower edge. Notice that the center fronts, which are normally seams, are now folds. In this particular sample, I have stitched this edge and now I need to do, after pressing, I need to do some trimming. And we can press the seam flat and then press it open. Again, try to press over light curves and as you can tell, I've, I think pressing is so important because it helps get all the edges very sharp, makes sewing a little bit more interesting. Then after pressing, then you can do the trimming. And I'm just going to quickly trim this because you do the same trimming as before. At the corner, angle cut. Clip that off so that most of the bulk is removed. When you turn this collar right side out, which I have accomplished on this finished collar, you have folds at each center front. The seam is at the center back of the under collar, not the top collar, just the under collar. And you have perfect collar points. It's a great technique. When I first began sewing, I used to avoid patterns with collar bands because the center front curves always had a lump caused by the bulk of the seams. This changed when I modified the technique and simplified the process. I hope you'll enjoy this streamlined idea. Putting a collar and collar band together on your shirt is very comparable to making a wrap collar plus a mandarin collar and putting them together. We'll start with the collar band. It resembles the mandarin collar, like the style I'm wearing. The pattern piece looks very comparable. We're going to treat it m very similarly to our first technique, cutting two collar bands and interfacing with f full interfacing both collar bands. And as I prop this up, you'll see that I've also marked the stitching line on one of the collar bands with a tracing paper, just the way we did earlier. You would do this on both sides. The only addition that I made to this technique is to press the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance of one collar band to press mark it. This will give us a great indication of where this line should fall on the finished blouse. This other collar band is interfaced, and now I'm going to sandwich a finished collar between the collar bands. This is a wrap collar technique, and I'm going to meet the right side of the collar to the right side of the unpressed collar band, matching the notches, and then simply 
place the collar band on top of it. The, this will be the band that will be on the inside when I get done sewing. I like this technique because it follows suit to the way we worked with the mandarin collar and many of the same ideas will apply. For example, I'm going to start to sew at the very lower cut edge. I've unfolded the pressed up seam allowance, but that mark will say, stay pressed in there. I will stitch around the curve and then the entire total length or the outer edge of the band. On my machine, I'm going to set the machine for a shorter stitch length, a 1.5 setting on my length, which is like 18 to 20 stitches per inch if you have a different way of setting the machine. Again, the reason that I like to shorten the stitch length is that when going around curves, and this time I'm going to be matching or aligning the stitching with the marking, it makes it so much easier to manipulate that curve and make it accurate. As I'm getting to the stretch, this longer area where I do not need the short stitch length, then you can definitely change your stitch length and go back to the normal settings. And you continue sewing the neck edge, and when you get to the other curve, again, shorten that stitch length. After sewing the entire length, which I haven't done at this point, you do the same pressing techniques. You can see the stitching aligns, then you would press the seam flat, then press it open. On this next sample, I've done the pressing, and you can see the press mark of that inner collar. That will help us in just a little bit, but let's take a look back inside. When you have a very severe curve like this, notice how I've trimmed, how closely I've trimmed and graded these seam allowances. It's approximately a fourth of an inch or less wide. That short stitch will also prevent the fabric from raveling, so you really don't have to worry about it. Because of the nice pressing jobs, when you turn this right side out, it's a very nice curve. And this way, both curves will align perfectly. Now, after you've completed the stitching, now you can attach this whole unit right to the neckline of your shirt. We have a mini shirt, just a small little neckline sample here to show you how this would be attached. Notice the front and back of the shirt has been attached at the shoulder seam. And now align the collar band to the center front. And just stack one on top of the other because you want these edges to be perfectly matched. And when I attach the two, I'm only going to pin the outer collar band to the shirt front. And I would pin all the way around the neck edge. Now this may take some time to match the notches, the markings, so that you have the collar band distributed equally or in the correct proportion to the shirt. But after stitching, then simply, or pinning, excuse me, stitch the 5 eighths of an inch line. And next we have the sample that has this already sewn. The collar band has been attached to the neckline, and when I flip it up, you'll see it's been attached on the ins inside or outside, but not the inside. So before attaching it to the inside and covering up all the seam allowances, we need to do some trimming. I'll switch to the opposite end of this collar. We use every bit of fabric here by just trimming one half of the collar to show you what is needed. Pressing and finger pressing are great at this point because you'd press that seam flat, then press it open. And you can see I've graded some of the seam allowances so that most of the bulk can get eliminated. We have so many layers of fabric that it's important to take the step-by-steps to have them work together. Now that press mark that we had earlier, we'll simply just cover the seam allowance and then do some stitching. I'm going to do the edge stitching just by sewing at the very edge of the fabric, starting at the very fold, and sewing on the inside, stitching about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And as I stitch all the way down the whole collar, it'll be finished in just seconds. Here's our finished collar band, a combination of a wrap collar and a mandarin collar. Mm -hmm.
hope you've enjoyed this program on Tune Into Collars, where I've shared with you four unique ways of creating collars by wrapping the corners rather than pivoting at the corners, or using tracing wheel and tracing paper to get perfect shapes for mandarin collars, changing the pattern for this what we call an express style collar to get folds at the front, and then combining express style collar technique and a mandarin for a shirt, perfect shirt collar. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Visit Nancy's website at www.sewingwithnancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy has been made possible by grants from the following companies. FOP, simply the best European line of sewing machines. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears. Oxmoor House, publishers of sewing, quilting, and craft books. Madeira Threads, designed for home and professional embroiderers everywhere. And Nancy's Notions Sewing Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and notions. <laughs>